All right, good morning, everyone. This is Ryan from IG. I'm the uh, market strategist. Um, as always, I'll be giving the snapshot on what are the fundamental macro um, events to look out for. So today, um, or rather this week's going to be a very interesting week because you've got two um, major things to look out for. One of them, of course, is the QE3 um, event and some news of ECB. But before we go into the details, the disclaimer, all right. Of course, um, all this is just for information and educational purposes. This does not take into account your specific financial background or needs. So IG will not take any responsibility for how you use this information. Okay, with that out of the way, let's go in into the uh, weekly outlook. And yes, uh, Lenny, thanks for your question. We look at specific stops, but at short notice, I think we can only look at technicals. If we want to go into fundamentals, it will have to depend on whether I've been following the stock. So I'll go into some of them which I've been following later. If there's anything in, um, that needs more research, I will help look at it more closely. Okay, so one of the uh, events I was mentioning about was the ECB. What's been happening over the weekend was um, you've got the European Central Bank reporting that it bought some covered bonds last week, 1.7 billion euros. And the other major event was the stress tests on the European banks. So overall, the stress test came away, was quite positive for the markets. They thought um, the event was um, good. Only 25 of the banks failed out of more than 100. And out of these 25 banks that failed, um, more than half have already started to um, do take measures to get out of this, um, I guess, uh, segment of failure. So that leaves only 12 who actually still need to do things to pass. So overall, that was a positive event for the markets. And but on the ECB stimulus front, there's still some, still some concerns that ECB is not getting enough traction on its stimulus. There's um, still talk about whether it needs to push a similar QE to the US. So all this is still in the background, which is why yesterday European stocks were a bit choppy. You started the day off with that positive news on the European stress test, and then later on, some investors started to cash out. And the other key event will be on Wednesday night, Thursday morning, around 2 a.m. The Federal Reserve is going to give its announcement on QE3. Is it going to cut the final $15 billion from its bond buying program? And the other thing to look out for will be its monetary policy statement. Is it going to be hawkish or dervish? So the key phrase everyone's looking out for is considerable time. Whether it's still going to stick to this, which will mean lower for longer, which will which will mean um, interest rate hikes likely around mid-2015. If it takes this away, it means we might see interest rate hikes earlier than mid-2015. So that will be a positive bias or upside bias for the US dollar. And all these um, events, if they cut QE3 or if, and end it, that also signal a hawkish um, approach by the US government. And there will also be a positive uh, upside catalyst for the US dollar against other currencies. And other news to look out for, last week China property news didn't come in very well. We talked about it last uh, in last week's uh, seminar. There was this uh, housing price index. The last time it came in was 0.5%. It went into negative territory, means overall there was a price contraction about 1.3%. And the price um, drop spread to more cities. Previously, it was around 68 cities out of 70. Now you're looking at 69 out of 70. So property sector still not doing very well. And the property sector accounts for 15% of the Chinese economy. So that's one, uh, I guess, pivot point to look out for if you're watching the Chinese economy, whether we are going to see a turnaround in these prices. And we also saw some um, corporate earnings out of the property sector. China Vanka and another um, company, was showing profit margins are eroding. So of course, with 
prices of property dropping, your margins are going to erode. So outlook on property stocks in China and um, wider index, not very bullish in the interim. And the other thing is um, Chinese data, some reports that when China reports its um, export data to Hong Kong, it's inflated versus um, Hong Kong's import numbers. So there's some possible discrepancies and some of the data we are reading out of um, China's trade numbers. For example, in September, Hong Kong reported 24.1 billion imports from China, whereas China reported 37.6 billion exports to Hong Kong. So there's quite a big gap. So you have to really um, almost take some of the data with a pinch of salt now until we get, uh, I guess, uh, further. And this, uh, this gap has been widening over the past few uh, months and this is the widest in quite a long while. The other thing macro event to look out for is oil still drifting lower so that's not good news for oil rigs and um, oil related plays. But that could be a good support for airlines and other company or other um, sectors which rely on oil input. And this is the week that we're looking at. This uh, You should be able to see this uh, Monday to Friday chart uh, most of the heavy action end of the week. Yesterday we mentioned we had stress test. Last night, US services PMI. I'll just go into this specific chart at a glance and then I'll go into the details in uh, the next few slides. The key events, of course, FOMC on uh, Thursday and Q3, US Q3 GDP. And then on Friday, end of the week, you have the Bank of Japan policy statement to look out for and some European inflation numbers. So overall, I can tell there's a lot of action on um, US dollar and possibly either Euro dollar or dollar yen because of the Japanese numbers coming out and the European um, economic numbers. So looking at yesterday, we had the stress test. 13 failed. Actually, it's 25, but 13 are still failing. Four from Italy, two from Greece, none. The good news is none from the major economies like Germany and France, which is why the markets um, were quite positive uh, yesterday in the beginning. Services PMI for US was slightly lower. So 57.3 was the reading, came in below the previous reading of 58.9. So there's still a bit of, I guess, things to look out for if you want to look out for a US economic recovery. Some of the indicators are doing very well, but you are looking at things like wage growth, home sales, manufacturing. These are still a bit choppy. Inflation numbers and employment numbers are still doing well, so that's the good news. So likely when you look for the FOMC meeting in the middle of the week, they'll be watching out for how these indicators on wage, home sales, manufacturing will improve before they bring forward any interest rate hikes. Today we have the Japanese trade numbers. Um, earlier this morning came in much better than expected. It was a bit of a surprise. We were just um, watching out for 0.8% rise. And it came in at 2.3% year on year. Uh, typically this would mean a stronger um, yen, but I think uh, this markets are a bit subdued and they are waiting for the um, FOMC meeting. Later on tonight, you have um, U.S. durable goods orders. We're expecting a bit of an improvement. Also a bit of an improvement in the consumer confidence index. Wednesday, more Japanese data. Also a bit of um, improvement. We're expecting, uh, expecting a dip of just minus 0.1% from the bigger dip of minus 3.3% in the previous month. And FOMC on Thursday morning, 2 a.m. And Germany unemployment numbers will be something to look out for. There's been a bit of seesaw um, with the data from Germany. There were some worries about it going to technical recession. But on the unemployment data, the market forecast is expecting a bit of improvement. 4K versus the 12K from the previous month. Um, US GDP should come in a bit, uh, show a bit of stability at 3%. Prior was 4.6%. That's for Q3. And Q1, we saw it at negative 2.1%. Um, so as long as we keep around this level, it should um, 
show some stability for the U.S. economy and should be positive overall. And the other, another Germany um, indicator in at 10 p.m. CPI or um, inflation numbers 0.9 percent, slight uptick from 0.8 percent. That's the um, forecast. And Friday we have the Bank of Japan uh, month policy statement. It, they do this every month. So the last month we saw them warn of weak production numbers, manufacturing numbers. So what to look out for is whether they're going to be more dervish and more conservative and I guess posture themselves to offer more stimulus or they take the recent numbers um, they've been seeing out of Japan, the better numbers as um, encouraging. So FOMC, um, this is a question from uh, Mr. Tiam. FOMC on Q3, they'll be announcing it at 2 a.m. Thursday morning, which will be Wednesday, very late at night, Thursday, 2 a.m. So this will be its um, statement on whether it's going to cut the last $15 billion on its bond buying program, as well as its is a monetary policy statement, 2 a.m. And back to Friday, European unemployment numbers, we're expecting it to be flat at 11.5% and a bit of an improvement in consumer inflation numbers, 0.4%. But you have to bear in mind that these uh, this inflation numbers are still quite well off target of um, its ideal 2%. So overall, we can expect some downward bias on the euro in the longer term. Okay. Uh, one of the things I'm looking out for this week or rather this month has been the VIX. We talked about it um, in the last session, all the Ebola fears going out and that's helped the VIX index pull back to um, the, around the 16 point level from a 21 point level earlier. So my expectations are with all these you know, volatility after QE3 ends, no one knows what's going to happen. Will there be a flight of capital um, leaving the emerging markets back to the US because of expected interest rate hikes? Will there be Ebola fears coming back online? Will there be more geopolitical tensions? So there is quite a uh, potential upside uh, or spike if any of these events happen. And if you can look at the past few months, it's been on this baseline 16. So this is almost normal for the VIX. So if you're expecting any possible volatility events, this is something you can look at for potential upside. Of course, the oil-related plays do something to also look at. You're looking at um, Sankop Marine, Capel, Costco Corp. Oil-related plays are not going to be doing very well in the near term. Some um, earnings season, of course, this um, month. Things to look out for tonight, Facebook. I think a lot of you are very interested in this one. Overall, the sentiment for this is positive. We're expecting um, better numbers because you've got more products on Facebook, bigger advertisements, and better targeting. So we've seen all this um, improve the um, analyst forecast for this quarter, and we should see some good numbers. But just something to watch out for. Long term, it's been on an uptrend. There's been some possible pricing in of the news. So this is something that would be um, positive on the up uptrend. That could be some... Um, profit taking on the results which should give a window to buy on dips if it does drop. Another interesting one is on Thursday, GoPro. Some of you may remember it um, started its IPO with a big bang and it's been rallying and rallying to around $98. But today it's since dropped by 30% because investors are starting to realize all those promises may not be coming through. They were promising that they'll be um, giving plans on how you can monetize all these videos with a social kind of media empire master plan. But still no signs of that. So investors losing confidence and cashing out. So there's a very good um, downtrend to look at. 
on the charts. And on in local markets, you have um, Shing Xiong and Great Eastern tomorrow. And Singpost, of course, this is tied to a bit to the Alibaba story, e-commerce, and Singpost itself has been pushing out some um, big plans. So that's been helping the price go up. And the banking sector, Thursday and Friday, you will be OCBC, DBS, um, giving its results. The outlook, we're expecting a positive um, in the near or in the longer term, medium term. With interest rate hikes, it should improve some of the margins for banks. So this will potentially be um, good news on its outlook. All right, so, um, before I hand over to Nabil, is there any questions you'd like me to get into? All right, um, one question from Lenny. What's the VIX benchmark I'm looking at? So let's go back to the chart. So if you look back at 15 October, we had um, news like Ebola possibly spreading some European growth concerns. So if you get those type of headlines coming back, I think it's not difficult to see that push back to the same 2021 levels again. 